Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, let's learn how to add an attribute directive to an HTML element or a component based on a given condition. So in my previous lecture, one of my subscribers asked me this question. What if when we only want one of the items to be highlighted? For example, let's say we have a list of cards and we only want to highlight that card which have the highest number of likes. So for example, in this web page, we have three cards. And the second card has the highest number of likes. So we only want to highlight this second card. So here we want to add the highlight directive to that HTML element which has highest number of likes. That means we want to add an attribute directive to an HTML element based on a given condition. Let's see how to achieve this scenario. Let's go to VS Code. And here in the app component class, I have created a property called videos and this videos is an array and it has three video objects and each object here has a title, share, likes, dislikes and a thumbnail. Now in the app component.html file, we are looping over that videos array as you can see here using this ng4 directive and then we are displaying the thumbnail of the video and we are displaying the number of likes, dislikes and share. So this is how it looks in the web page. Now here what we want is from this videos array, we want to get the video which has the highest number of likes and then on that video, we want to use the highlight attribute directive. So the first thing which we are going to do is inside this app component class, let's create a property, let's call it most liked video and to this property we want to assign the most like video from these three videos so to this let's assign a method and let's call this get method get most liked video okay and let's go ahead and let's create this method and here let's use this keyword now in order to get the most like video what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this videos array based on the number of likes and I'm going to sort this array in descending order so when we will sort this array in descending order based on the number of likes then the first element in that sorted array will be the most liked video right so we will get the first element from the sorted array and we will assign that element to this most liked video now here, instead of sorting the original array, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of this videos array. So inside this method, let's first create a variable. Let's call it maybe video copy. So this video copy variable is going to store a copy of this videos array. And to create a copy, I'm going to use spread operator. So within square brackets, let's use this spread operator. And let's use this spread operator on this videos array. Now, if you want to learn more about spread operator, then you can check my video on spread operator in my JavaScript course. Basically, a spread operator expands the elements of an array into its individual elements. So the elements of this videos array will be expanded into individual elements then we are wrapping those individual elements inside square brackets. So in that way, they will become an element of an array. Now, why I'm creating a copy of this videos array is because when we sort an array, the sort method which we use to sort an array, it also updates the original array. And here, I don't want to update the original array. Okay, I don't want to sort the original array. All right. So here inside this video copy variable, we have a copy of this videos array. Now let's go ahead and let's sort this video copy array. So on this video copy array, let's use sort method. Now to this sort method, we need to pass a compare callback function, which will sort this video copy array based on the number of likes. Again, if you want to learn more about sorting an array, you can watch my lecture on sorting arrays from my JavaScript course. I'll put the link in the description. All right, so to this sort method, let's pass a callback function. 
and this callback function will receive two parameters. The first parameter which it will receive will be the current element. Let's call it current. And the second parameter which it will receive will be the next element. Okay, so this sort method will loop over this array and for each iteration, it will assign this current parameter with the current element and it will assign this next parameter with the next element. So for example, for the first iteration, this current parameter will be assigned with this first object. And this next parameter will be assigned with this second object. Now here we want to sort the array in descending order based on number of likes. So when we want to sort an array in descending order, we can return a positive number from this callback function. In that case, this sort method will sort the array in descending order. Now if you want to sort an array in ascending order, then you can return a negative number from this callback function. In that case, this sort method will sort the array in ascending order. Okay, so here let's say next dot likes because this current and this next will be assigned with these objects. Okay, so these objects has this likes property. So here let's say next dot likes minus current dot likes. So this logic is going to sort this video copy array in descending order. Okay, so the video which has the highest like will be the first element and the video which has the lowest like will be the last element of this video copy array. Now from that sorted array, we want to get the first element. So for that, let's use indexing and let's specify the index number as zero. So this will return us the first element from this sorted array. Then let's also return that element from this method. And that returned element will be assigned to this most liked video. All right, so in this way, we have the most liked video from this videos array. Now let's go ahead and let's create our highlight directive. And I'm going to create this highlight directive inside this app folder itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's open VS Code built-in terminal. And here, let's type ng generate command. And we want to generate a directive. And let's call this directive highlight itself. Let's press enter. So the highlight directive has been generated. Let's delete this spec.ts file. We don't need it for now. And let's go to this highlight directive.ts file. So here we have this highlight directive class and the selector for this class is app highlight. Now here when we will use this selector on an HTML element, we will receive that HTML element as the first argument for this constructor. So Angular is going to inject that element for this constructor. Okay, so here let's specify a parameter name. Let's call it element. It is going to be of type element ref. And we will also receive an instance of the renderer2 class. So let's call the parameter renderer and let's specify it type as renderer2. And let's also use private keyword in front of them so that a private property with these parameter name will be created behind the scenes and that will be available throughout this highlight directive class. All right, now let's go ahead and let's create an input property. So for that, let's first use this input decorator and let's call our property name app highlight itself. And here on this app highlight, you know, in order to assign the value for this app highlight property, we also want to execute some logic. Okay, so I'm going to use setter on this highlight property. And when we use a setter, we can use that property like a method. Okay, and in this way, we can write some logic for this property in order to set its value. So here, let's say for this property, we will receive a condition. Let's call that parameter condition and it is going to be of type boolean. Okay, so let's correct the spelling. So it is condition. Now inside these curly braces, let's check if the condition is true. I mean, let's use this condition parameter. So if this condition is true, then only we want to apply 
the logic for the highlight directive to any HTML element or component. So here, let's first access this renderer and let's say we want to add a class. Okay, now we want to add this class on the element which we will receive inside this element parameter. So here, let's say this dot element dot native element. And on this element, we want to set a CSS class. And in order to save some time, I have already created that CSS class. So let's go to appcomponent.css and I'm calling this class highlight. And here we are basically setting the background color. We are setting the border and we are also setting the border radius. So let's go ahead and let's specify this CSS class name for this directive. Okay, so whenever we will use this app highlight selector on any HTML element, this directive will only get applied if the condition which we have assigned to it returns true. If it does not return true, if it returns false, then this logic will not be applied on that HTML element or that component. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's use this app highlight directive on this video card div. Okay, now here we need to specify a condition. So here we are looping over the videos array and for each iteration we are receiving the video object inside this video variable. So here let's say if this you know if the number of likes of this video if it is equal to the number of likes of this most liked video then only we want to add this app highlight directive on that HTML element. Okay. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you will notice that that class has been applied on this card. So this card has the highest number of likes. So this style, you know, this highlight CSS style has only been applied on that card which has the highest number of likes. So here what is happening is when we are using this app highlight directive to this we have assigned a TypeScript expression. Now this TypeScript expression will return a boolean value. It will either return true or it will return false. And that value will get assigned to this condition parameter. Then we are checking if the condition is true then apply this logic on that HTML element or component. But if this condition is false, then do nothing. All right. So I hope with this example, now you have a good understanding of how to add an attribute directive to an HTML element or a component based on a given condition. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.